<laughs> What's up, everybody? It's Luke, Lucas Thornton, Noble Photo LLC. I've never done one of these what's in my camera bag, but I'm gonna do this in one take, one take along, not two takes, not four takes, not, I lost count. But I'm gonna try to do this in one take. My kid's having a bath right now, it's lunchtime. And I just wanna do one of these what's in my camera bag. What's in my camera bag, 2021, January the 5th, 2021. <laughs> so we should probably start off by saying, what kind of camera bag do I use? I don't know, it's functional though. Let me see. It is none other <clears throat> than the Pro Tactic 450 AW. It's a fantastic bag. Why did I get why did why did I get this bag? I got this bag simply because a YouTuber by the name of Peter McKinnon recommended it, and a lot of things that he recommends pretty much falls in line with what I like. So if he says something's good, probably gonna like it. So I actually got the bag and realized it holds a 1DX Mark II perfectly. And I like to shoot with cameras with a, with a grip because I don't like the way a camera without a grip feels. So cameras with grips fits perfectly in the bag. Let me show you. So this is a ProTactic 450 AW. It's a huge bag. It's a big bag. It's a real heavy bag. What's in my camera bag? <laughs> so first of all, one of the most important things that I do is I carry a ton of batteries. This is a battery holder uh, that I got from eBay and it holds the LPN E16 thing. I think that's the name of the, the hold on a second. LP, LPE6. And actually the LPE6N is the one that goes with the R5 uh, and the R6 comes with those cameras and it holds charge. It's a smarter, it's a smarter battery. But I got a lot of these batteries that I keep in here and some are on the charger right now, yada, yada, yada. I should probably put my phone number on there, but I have not had a friend give me an extra charger. So I was like, oh, okay, sure, no problem. So let's get to the meat of the matter. Okay, so about a year ago, I was shooting heavily with the 1DX Mark II from Canon. Love that camera, still love that camera. That camera is still in my camera bag. It's it's fast, <laughs> it's fantastic. It has a shutter unlike any shutter I've ever heard before. It's crazy, you can't miss a shot, it's crazy. But it's a DSLR, which means you have a digital single lens reflex, which means there's a mirror in there that, that, that sends the, <laughs> sends the light up through a prism to your eye and you just, it's a lot, to, it's, it flicks, it's, it's loud. You're at a wedding and you you, you pull down on that thing. <laughs> what in the world was that? What was that? You, you get what I'm saying? So I don't really shoot with it all that much, but it's kind of a backup camera now for the Aku de Gura, <laughs> the, the Apex camera that I love so very much, which is the Canon R5. It has 46 megapixels. Shoots 8K, but I don't do video with this camera, so it's not really worthy of me having it, but I have it because I wanted a camera with 46 megapixels. For the longest time, I shot with the 1DX Mark II, which has got like 20 and a half or so megapixels, which does fantastic. Don't worry, it's great. Um, but I wanted a higher megapixel, higher resolution, resolution camera, so I went with the R5. Went with the R5 because I just, I just said it, 20, <laughs> 46 megapixels. So it's the new RF mount. So all of the EF glass that I had that I love uh, still, um, I decided to kind of slowly go into the whole uh, RF range of lenses and stuff. But there was one focal length that I absolutely love more than any other length that, that I've ever shot with. And, that, and that's the 85, okay? So I was sporting the 85 uh, EF 1.2 version two for the longest time. And I got to a place where I was just tired of it because of chromatic aberration. It was a little slow focusing, so I let that thing go. Uh, sold it uh, through Facebook Marketplace for I think 750 bucks. Proud, the guy got it, he loves it. Ha be merry. And in the meantime, I purchased, it's actually up on my shelf, I can't get it. I'm held down by this bag. I purchased the, well, let me, well, shoot, if we're doing a camera review, we might, as, we might as well do it all up right, right? Hold on a second. Um, for, oh gosh, it's so hard to get up. Purchased the, um, you're still watching, wow. You must be interested in this stuff. <laughs> um, I had purchased, I had purchased the, right after, the 85 1.4, which is a great lens. 
this lens beats the 1.2 version 2 like I, like Thor's hammer. It doesn't doesn't even compare. It's crazy. It's so much better. It's got image stabilization, so you can put it on a C200. You can put it on any camera, and it stabilizes. It's so good. It's so great. Uh, it, it makes your life easier. Okay. So there's there's that lens. Uh, but then then I got then I got really crazy one night. Oh, yes, go. Oh. I got really <laughs> I got really crazy one night. And I decided to I decided to pull the trigger on the the, the, the 85. It's the 85, the 85 RF. I'm not gonna take it off the camera because I don't miss it. The 85 RF. Now let me tell you something. I don't use filter filters on the front of cameras at all. I never have, never will, because this camera lens is like around three thousand dollars for this lens. It's an expensive lens. Trust me. It, wow. But you know, I needed something a little bit more powerful or whatever, so I decided to go got cat hair on the front of it freaking cat hold on i'll get that later but anyways decided to go with the 85 1.2 and this lens honestly stays on the front of my camera 99.9 percent .9 of the time if i have a good location which i have a lot of space i'm rocking this bad boy period and it's the rf mount lens so i don't have to fool with any adapters or any of that stuff so i go between that lens on wedding day to, of course, the lens everybody uses. Where are you at? Uh, it's over here. I have two camera bags. One's my wife, one's mine. It's actually all my wife's. <laughs> uh, the um, Canon 100mm macro, which is perfect for those detailed shots, those things that you really need that you can't really get close up with a wide. It's just, just what I do. I lo love Love that lens. And plus, it's great for portraits as well. But I typically will spend the better part of about 15 minutes when I get to a wedding doing, doing details. Detail shots of flowers, rings, all of that stuff, you know. Um, I always like to have a super wide in my bag. 16 to 35 version 3. It's not crazy, crazy wide like I just said, even though it's a great lens. It's a great lens. It has a little bit of... Um, has a little bit of a uh, a vignetting problem at six point at, 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 at 16, 16 millimeters at two point eight, but you can fix it in post. It's not a bad, not a big, big, big a bad deal. It's not a big a bad deal. It's not a big a bad deal, man. It's ridiculous. No, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's a great lens. It's ultra wide. Not, no, it's not. It's just wide. It's wide at sixteen. So like, see that? It's cool. It's a great lens. Got it at Best Buy for two thousand bucks a year year or two ago. Paid off. Thank God. Um, I really don't shoot with that wide much unless I'm in a tight spot uh, or if I want something that's really different, has a different kind of aesthetic to it, I'll shoot with it. But typically our, all of our shots are shot wide open with as much bokeh as possible because we just love bokeh. Love bokeh. Um, of course, the workhorse, the workhorse, the workhorse, <laughs> the workhorse lens that you typically always uh, want to have in your bag no matter what. It's the 24 to 70. Now notice that the 24 to 70, just like the... Well, it's down there, just like that uh, that hundred millimeter hundred millimeter macro. It has the uh, has the adapter. Got to adapt these things. You have EF cameras. I'm sorry. You have EF glass. It has to be adapted over to your RF mount, or, or it's incompatible. It's not usable. Funny story. One of the first weddings that we shot with the uh, the RF camera systems, my wife was trying to put on an EF lens directly on the RF mount. I was like, no, no, it doesn't work that way, and. She got mad at me. Um, I was about to start doing video with the R5 until all of the stuff pertaining to the um, uh, the overheating stuff came out. So I just so I had bought this, um, you know, the, the it's the the variable ND, but this is the clear ND, which costs a hundred bucks. Ridiculous, I know. It's Canon, come on, man, and. Uh, so I keep the keep the variable ND in another bag because I don't ever use use for video and and it, it cuts down on several stops um, if it's not turned all the way or something you get what I'm saying. Um, that's pretty much. I don't I don't I have a seventy to two hundred, but it's a Sigma, and I rarely ever find myself using it. Actually, I do have another pretty pretty good. Uh, it's a uh, 135 millimeter 
F2. I don't know why this is in there, I never use it, but it's great to have in a pinch. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Okay. Oh, I decided, my wife decided that she wanted to go mirrorless, so I ended up buying her the R6. The difference between the R6 and the R5, the R6 is 20 megapixels. However, the shutter, in my opinion, and this is layman's term stuff, guys. I'm not some genius, okay, at all. Um, the shutter on the R6 is fast. It's like, let me just listen, hell. Trying to make noises and stuff, I'll just let you hear it, you know? Let's see here. That's so fast. Listen to this. That's, that's fast. That's 20 frames a second, nearly. Shutter on the R5. Uh, I'll let you hear that real quick. If you're still with us, you must be bored. <laughs> Shutter on the R5. It's kind of clunky. Not clunky, it's kind of slow. It's slower. Hold on a second. Here we go. It's just not as fast. It's probably because of cards. I could probably change that up a little bit. Don't really care. I don't shoot that fast. But I would say if I had to do it all over again, I would still, I would still get, I would still get the R5 and also the R6. I would. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just have one or the other. I'd have both. Um, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Bread and butter, no doubt. 35 millimeter 1.4 version 2. Yep. You need that for your bridal portraits and whatnot. Works great. I also got I also got a 24. I don't get it out. I also got a 24 millimeter 1.4 version 2. Don't really shoot with that a lot unless I need just a different aesthetic. Everything's about the aesthetic. Everything's about what you need. Um, like I said earlier, 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, I'm shooting with that, the R5 with the 85 millimeter 1.2. Uh, I shoot a lot of weddings a year. I shoot like 50, anywhere between 50 and 60 weddings a year. And to be completely clear with you guys, um, I have no, I have no time for anything else. Like anything artistic that I'd like to do. No, don't have time. I have a kid in the bathtub, splashing water everywhere. Um, my wife has another job. I have another job. This is actually a lunch break video. I have to get back to work. So I have all this great gear, but, you know, being artistically inclined to go capture something out and about on my own free will just rarely never happens because I'm pretty much a servant to the, to the, to the wedding hobby, which it pays well, does great and wonderful things. But, you know, that's what I knew getting into this. If you are somebody who is interested in getting into wedding photography, wedding videography, um, ask me questions. Let me know. Uh, I'm not a blowhard Instagrammer. I'm not a hashtagger. I'm not a blogger I'm, I'm basically a vlogger video because i get what i need to get out quickly you can hear what i got to say present it in the most professional manner as possible look at the camera you ask me questions and we'll move along it'll be great um but like yeah this is being recorded on a on an iphone iphone 12 max pro it's just a phone you know this is what works for me because i have no time to go get in the podcast room and set that stuff all up and do a video like this i just don't i wish i did but I don't. So hopefully this content is sufficient. It's long. It's like 15 minutes long. It's 13 minutes and 47 seconds right now. So I do apologize. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions about any lenses, um, EF lenses, RF lenses, the 1DX Mark II compared to the R5 or anything, just ask them down below. I would be, I would, I would be in love with answering any of your questions as much as possible, trying to be as transparent as possible and as real as possible with you guys. How many times do I say possible? I don't know. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video review. 2021, here we come.